How's it going guys? You are with Scotty here. If you're following my channel, you know that we uh, just got back from the uh, Pultimore Fair last weekend. I was doing sound and lights out there all weekend. It was a great weekend, but it was really, really fun to actually put this thing through through its paces. Um, I've owned this for a little while now, but I've never really um, used it like I, you know, really tested it out like I did this weekend and uh, I gotta say I was very very pleased with uh, um, with uh, working with this uh, board the, the whole festival so I'm gonna do a little bit of a, a video here on this board and um, just kind of walk you through um, I'm just kind of walk you walk you guys through it because I think it's a fairly interesting piece of gear um, so just give you a little bit of a backstory I started working at the lasso in Pembroke over the pandemic and the lasso uses um, a pre-sonus board just like this one I actually it's literally the exact same board so I bought this to familiar familiarize myself with that board so I can you know do my job better um, and um, so that's how I acquired this I got it from a studio up here in uh, West Quebec as it's in very good condition uh, this is an old board it's it's uh, the manufacturing date on the on the back of this is 2011 um, so by this time now we're in 2021 this thing is uh, obviously old hat there's a lot of uh, other digital boards on the market presumably better um, more bells and whistles what have you but I gotta say um, I'm an analog guy I am uh, not much of a digital lover but so um, it's taken me quite some time to warm up to this thing, but I, I am very, uh, very pleased with it. And I do really, really like the way it sounds. So that is a... Uh, um, and I should mention that I, I have worked with the Midas stuff, uh, a little bit of the Allen and Heath, but Midas 32R, all, all those uh, style of digital boards, and the, of course the Behringer X32. I've worked with that before. Um, I just, um, I like buttons, I like faders that have a very specific function. I find that there are just too many layers um, to scroll through on, on these newer style digital boards. You know, one knob can be assigned to do a million different things. Um, that just kind of doesn't work for me in, in a speedy, speedy environment. Um, but I think it's probably that I probably just don't have enough experience working with the, the Midas stuff or the Behringer stuff. But um, I do really like this PreSonus board. I feel like it's got a good mix of analog and digital. I got all the good things from analog and all the good things uh, from digital. So um, I am very happy with it. So let's have a quick, quick look here. Has all the all the necessary things to do great live sound. So you've got uh, 24 channels, uh, all that all have XLR inputs, and uh, mic line in and insert on every channel. Um, has a talk back mic. Uh, it has this mono. Sorry, I'm just trying to maneuver the camera here. It has this mono output and I haven't used that yet I don't really know what you would use that for but probably for a monitor um, in the mixing booth we have our firewire hookups here digital out here's our main outputs um, all of the levels various levels of these are adjustable uh, moving across just more channels you've got um, quarter inch main, main out uh, tape in and out your control room output which uh, and then you've got your auxiliary inputs and then here are your subgroup outputs now the subgroup outputs can actually be time aligned so if you if you had a really big 
uh, PA system, you could uh, theoretically time align um, a set of subs or, you know, different speakers in different locations if you wanted to. So that's kind of an interesting feature for this board. And then, um, and then you've got 10 auxiliary outputs, which is, which is absolutely phenomenal, fantastic thing to have when you're doing live stuff. You know, um, more than enough auxiliary mixes, two effects returns, and uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Some of these auxiliary uh, outputs are actually stereo. That comes in handy, for sure. Now if you look at the uh, the inputs here, you do have the the uh, well phantom power on all of them, but you can actually make these digital inputs. You can actually you can actually use this with a computer. Um, you can hook this up to a MacBook. I do have a MacBook, a uh, 2010 MacBook. Uh, I've just uh, sort of refurbished it, put a new hard drive in it just to work with this board. And it, it works well, and I've, I've done a little bit ex of experimentation with some of the software uh, that, that is supposed to be used with this board, uh, namely the capture software and the universal control software. But with the capture software, what you're able to do is, let's say in a sound check, you can actually, um, um, using the uh, capture software, you can, well, capture the sound check. And then if you select uh, digital input, uh, you can play those tracks back through the board and, you know, continue mixing, and, you know, while the band is on, on break or getting a drink or, or whatever. So uh, that is a pretty handy feature. Um, I have done a little bit of experimentation with that, and I have got it to work, but I am not um, by no means... Uh, expert on that yet but I will post another video once I get that once I'm fully confident with that and we'll, we'll have a look at how that works this board you can you can remotely control this board with a um, with an iPad um, I have yet to do that I'm still waiting on on my iPad I have an iPad that is being donated to me and it's just being kind of like wiped and cleaned up right now but it's in perfect condition and it's a 2010 so it should work everything here being of the same vintage I should have be able to utilize all of the features that came with this board um, and speaking of the uh, of the universal control software um, this is the 2442 non-AI version so they actually did come out with another version of this which was the same exact board but it was the AI version and with that one I think you could um, I think it had its own wireless built into the board so you can you could communicate with an uh, iPad or a tablet uh, without having it hooked up to a computer I, I think uh, don't quote me on that but um, I think that's the main difference with the AI. This you have to be connected to a computer and I believe you have to be on some kind of wireless network uh, like a you know with, obviously with the modem uh, sorry uh, yeah uh, modem uh, you guys know what I mean a router in order to utilize the feature where you can you can walk around and um, you know mix with a tablet in your hand wireless. So uh, whenever I get that working, I'll make another video. As for now, I'm just using it really more or less as an analog board, and I'm very, very happy with it. So uh, just kind of going through some other features. So every everything on this board, every channel, even the main, even all the subgroups, the mains, the effects, and all of the auxiliary sends can all be routed through this, what they call the fat channel. And on this fat channel, you have a high pass filter, gate, compressor, limiter, you got an equalizer, and then here are your assigns for each each track. You can you can link certain tracks if if you want to. A really handy feature that I really like is that you can load you can make custom custom settings for each of these for tracks. Uh, and then load them in. So for instance, if I select channel 1, I have, uh, if I go to 
uh, load, I could come over here and I've got a bunch of presets here that I've here's preset one that I, I programmed in here. Some of these are from the previous owner, like he's got one for cowbell, vocals male, yada yada. But I programmed this one. This is um I, this is my personal personal settings for an SM58. Of course, you know, usually you've got quite a few 58s on stage, so I just, you know, I just dialed in some settings, compression settings and EQ uh, that I really like for a 58. And so I can go to the channel preset, select it, and then, you know, I've got channel one selected. Let's say I want it there. I just press recall and then all of a sudden I've got all of my settings that I like for 58 and actually I've got a gate on it right now so if this had an actual microphone plugged into it it would actually be at, uh, being attenuated um, so it, it you know if you're using the gates it really helps especially with drums um, you know for bleed on drums or just all kinds of bleed on stage especially in between songs if you if you apply the gate um, it really really helps uh, clean things up so really like that and you put that on every channel so that that's a really great feature I love that um, so yeah so let's say let's say I really liked uh, the settings I had for a particular mic on this channel I could uh, go copy and then toss that over there and now all of a sudden I have the exact same settings for this channel so it really really is a uh, really really quick um, it's a really great great board uh, so let's move on over here to the uh, your four subgroups let's have a look at the master section uh, the solo and place feature I have yet to use that I am um, still trying to figure out how to use that but I haven't really at all tried at all yet but so I'll, I'll learn how to use this here's your auxiliary inputs and you can actually on the auxiliary inputs your fat channel is can be applied to that as well so I mean you can apply the fat channel to even the effects like let's say you want to EQ the the effects return which is actually I, I, I use that all the time. I, I really like to EQ the, the effects. That's a, an important feature for me. So, um, so yeah, so you got to two track in, and that's just working with uh, this guy here. Two track in, and then you've got a monitor section. I think this is hooked to your control room output. Use your phones. And then you can select what you're listening to. Phones plug in right here. Just one main fader. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, here's your talk back section. You know, select main. Uh, or, you know, you can talk back into everything at once if you want to. But that works really good. You've got a graphic EQ on the main, on the mains. Uh, and I have not used this yet, so haven't really, really experimented too much with the graphic EQ. I, I do plan on using that, and I, I haven't experimented with with applying compression to uh, to the to the main to the main outputs. So I there's a lot of stuff with this board that I still have to experiment with, but. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. So moving on here, we've, here we've got, uh, we've got a bunch of, uh, you know, you can, you can save scenes. So here, you see I've got a Radmore uh, scene, but let's say, you know, I've, I've got a couple favorite settings in here. Let's say I just wanted to zero out the board again. I could just come up to here to see scene one, zero out board, press recall, and it's going to just reset the whole thing. Um, now, this does not have motorized faders, okay? But it does have a function where you can 
uh, recall uh, where the faders are. So I'll show you how that works. Um, and just as a side note, here's all your meters. So if we had music playing right now, we could, um, you know, the inputs, press the inputs, you'll see the meters here. Outputs, uh, you'll see the meters here as well. Uh, gain reduction, auxiliary, and then here, let's experiment with this fader locate function. Let's say, put our faders like that. If we go over to uh, fader locate, what it does is it uh, actually, and it tells us where our subgroups and mains are as well. So you see, if I move, if I move these, it changes the location up there. So it's telling me that in order to zero these out, they have to be, that's where they were when I pressed locate. So you see, if I move one of these faders, it will, it will get off, off centered up here. So, you know, it's fairly easy to, to remember, or sorry, to have the mixer tell you where these were. So that's how that works. Um, you know, it's not as good as motorized faders, but, you know, it, uh, it does the job. I actually haven't really had to use that, so I'm perfectly fine with just not having that. I really haven't had to use that very much yet. Anyways, um, and then of course you got a little uh, BNC connector here for your, for your lamp, and I, I don't have a, uh, a lamp for it just yet, but gonna order one off uh, Amazon. So last but not least here, let's, let's just have a look at this, uh, this these effects returns. So if we go to effects, you know we've got a bunch of different effects here. Uh, I've programmed, or sorry, if we go effects type, we've got two effects returns. We've got a bunch of uh, different, well, 13 different um, well, just different reverbs and delays. I find that the effects that you know that are you know directly in this thing, you got to really, really tweak them to get them to sound right. They don't sound very good. Um, just you know, just raw like that. You really have to like. Um, I found that you really have to like play with the settings and uh, especially like do a little EQ on the actual effect return to really get that to sound good because um, you sound a little rough like right off the bat. So for instance, I just want a, a tappable delay and a basic reverb. So if I go here, you'll see that I've programmed basic verb invokes so I can recall and that would be in my my effects return A, and then I usually just like to have. I've programmed another. Allergies are flaring up here. Basic delay, uh, I'm gonna re recall that, and now I've got my verb and delay. I'll do another video to show you how this sounds. I just don't have time tonight, but stay tuned to my channel because I think I'll, I'll do another video uh, with regards to the capture software and the universal control when I get that all working. But but anyways, so so yeah, you know, I find this that the mute function really helpful too because you know, in between songs, what I usually do is I I got the verb on while the band's playing, and then with the tap function here, you can tap out the the delay, and I love doing that. So and then, but of course, in between songs, I usually mute all the effects, and then when they get going again, boom. I think I'll uh, end the video there. My allergies are kind of flaring up. But that is the original PreSonus Studio Live 2442 non-AI version. So this is an old, old mixer. Um, still a really, really good piece of gear. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm an analog guy. I, I'm not really super into digital, digital stuff, but I, I must say I, I really, really like this this board, it, it's been fantastic and um, very solid. Performed really well this weekend. 
So anyway, stay tuned to my channel. I'll have more on this board uh, as soon as I find time to do some more videos. But um, yeah, I really want to get uh, make full use of all the features that uh, this board has, especially the capture function. It would be really great to uh, to uh, try that with a sound check with a band, so that I can you know mix them while they're you know not even not even there kind of thing as well as maybe we could do some recording on my channel you know maybe use this to uh, record a few songs of mine uh, that would be interesting also as well as trying to get the um, the uh, universal control to work which would allow me to like walk around and wirelessly mix on an iPad or something like that so that, all of that is uh, coming very soon on my channel, so if this kind of thing interests you, stick around. I um, uh, really like this older gear. It, it's great. And um, yeah, appreciate you guys uh, stopping by. I hope you enjoyed that video and found it interesting. And uh, stay tuned for more uh, You Ottawa Scotty. We'll, we'll see you soon.